and welcome to a live Kerfuffy break on Deep Program with Carrie Smith. I am your host, Carrie, and it's good to see you guys on this Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing green yet. I am going to be wearing green later because my husband has a couple of St. Patrick's Day shows and I get to go to one of them. So that's going to be fun. Um, good to see you guys here. If it's your first time here, this is a live show we do Mondays and Fridays. Sometimes we have guest hosts. And just talk about what's in the news and what's on our mind. Um, please hit like and subscribe if you like the show. Uh, today's episode, I figured we would just get back to basics and do a basic episode defining woke. What is woke? It's something I haven't, I guess I guess for a while now, I'd, I didn't think we needed to do this because I thought, you know, so many people have been talking about it in the past few years. And so many people have come to understand what it is. And I see people correctly defining it all the time. So I just assumed it was a given that we all know. However, something happened this week that caused this to be a, a point of discussion online. Um, and I'm going to just share with you. There have been a ton of videos about this now. I'm going to show you one of them from Young Turks. We'll start with this and then we're going to do the definition of woke. So the Young Turks covered this. There was their, their title of their video is conservative utterly fails when asked to define woke. And there are a lot of these. If you go on YouTube and look for can't define woke, there's a ton that came out in the past two days. Um, this is an author. I, get, I think her name is Bethany. I'm blanking on her last name. She has a book out about woke. And so we're about to watch the exchange that happened. Here we go. Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple of times and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that, um, I, this is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I yeah. <laughs> It certainly was. So now they cut her off. Now, granted, yes, she was stumbling. She maybe wasn't prepared for that question and maybe hasn't practiced or, or talked about it enough on interviews to be able to quickly and succinctly give her definition of what it is. But what you're going to see is she did give the definition. So after they make fun of her a little bit, to their credit, they do show her giving the definition, but they still mark it up as somehow that she's not able to do it so we'll continue now that was author bethany mandel and uh, she is an author of a book on wokeism titled stolen youth how radicals are erasing innocence and indoctrinating a generation now <laughs> things didn't really get much better as mandel tried to answer a pretty simple question considering she wrote a book on this let's watch Woke is something that's very hard to define, and we've spent an entire chapter defining it. It is sort of the understanding that we need to re to totally reimagine and re re redo society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Um, sorry, I. It's it's hard to explain in a fifteen second soundbite. Yeah, take look, your it, time. It, I mean, it's one of those things that uh, I mean, everybody is weighing in, in vain against wokeness. I get we do some of it on this show as well. Uh, it's definitely something you know what it is when you see it. But is it wrong? Yeah. It is. Will you define wokeness then? I, I would say it's the tendency to punish people formally or often informally for I expressing ideas using language specifically that is very new that no one would have objected to like five seconds ago. So it's easier to come up with examples like, you know, punishing people for using the wrong pronouns. RM, I feel like part of the... Okay, so there we got two definitions of woke, one from the person who was originally asked and one from the co-host, and they're both correct. They're both correct. Um, however, the headlines that came out of this is conservatives can't define woke. And it caused quite a bit of discussion on Twitter. I got tagged by Michelle at Force of Light onto this tweet by Torre. He says, I still have not found one conservative who's able to define woke. 
So you'll see below, I defined it. There's thousands of people who defined it. And what devolved from this is, even though there are thousands of people who are able to accurately define it, at least, at least judging by the responses I got to defining it, um, they don't really want a definition. They're, they're trying to say there's no definition. When you offer one, they, uh, in my case, they engaged in ad hominem attacks, but they themselves, those who are woke, those who take issue with defining woke, if you ask them, well, what's your definition of it then? If I have it wrong, what's your definition? Let's hear, let's get on the same page. They can't define it themselves. And then they say, well, I can't define it because it doesn't actually exist, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it does exist. It's uh, that's like saying liberalism doesn't exist or white supremacy doesn't exist. Or, you know, this is a tactic that um, much like changing the name, they you can't criticize something that you can't name. You can't criticize something that they claim doesn't exist. So this is a tactic to prevent people from criticizing it at all. It's a shape-shifting thing that they do. Um, woke, before it was called woke, it was most often called social justice. I still call it social justice a lot. Um, but woke has become colloquially the way that most people uh, are refer to it. So that's the word that most people know. So that's the one I use now. They will say... Woke started as a word that meant something totally different that black people were using. Um, that's all well and good. That doesn't matter because words evolve. And that word was popularized by woke white people to mean social justice. Now, it may continue evolving. It may end up meaning something else in the long run. But right now, when people use that word woke, they mean social justice or identity-based Marxism, identitarianism. There are lots of words for it. Um, what has happened is words like social justice warrior and woke, which came from the woke, which came from social justice people. We used to use these words positively to refer to our ideology, to social justice, because those words are, are now considered to be pejorative. They say, oh, social justice warrior is a pejorative. Woke is a pejorative. Yes, that's because... Uh, they're mostly now being used critically because that's a reflection on the ideology itself that, that those are names for because people are criticizing the ideology. People are usually using those words in a negative way because they have negative opinions about woke, about the ideology, about social justice. So now they're saying, well, you can't use those words because they're pejorative. They're trying to, again, prevent you from having any criticism, from expressing any criticism by changing the name of the belief system itself. So it doesn't matter what it's called. They may come up with a new word for it in the future. They may go back to calling it progressivism or social justice. But currently, today, it's uh, March 17th, 2023. <laughs> Woke is colloquially understood to mean social justice. So here's a quick definition. This is after talking about my old ideology, I spent 20 years in woke. I spent 20 years in social justice. I was a true believer in it. After getting out of it the past few years since 2016, 2017. So like maybe seven years now, oh my goodness. In talking about it and trying to better under, understand it and better explain it to people, this is the this is the definition of woke. Woke is an ideology that is a mutated form of Marxism that says the best way to look at the world is as a competition for power between identity groups. Okay, so Marxism, it's not Marxism. It's it's evolved from Marxism and from postmodernism, but that doesn't really matter. In this case. Marxism is an analogy so you can better understand it. If you understand Marxism, which is to boil it down, Marxism is the idea that the best way to look at the world is as a competition for wealth between class groups. And we have to redistribute the wealth between these class groups and then we'll reach equality and equity and utopia and everything will be great. We have to forcibly take wealth from some groups and give it to others. We have to forcibly take farms from the wealthy farm owners and give it to the people. Like that's Marxism. 
woke or social justice, also called identity Marxism, is similar. It's an analogy. But it says the best way to look at the world is as a competition for power between identity groups. And we have to redistribute power between these identity groups so that we can achieve equality, equity, utopia. So they're not concerned with wealth as much as they're concerned with power that these different groups have. That's a very easy, quick explanation. It's a belief system. Woke is a belief system that says the best way to look at the world is as a competition for power between identity groups and that what we need to do is redistribute power between these identity groups until we reach e equity and utopia. There's more we can talk about in regards to woke. This is why when people define it, you'll see people putting it into their own words and they're right. They're describing different facets of it. Um, there are a couple of characteristics of the woke ideology that are often used to describe it, which are true. It is, woke is an illiberal ideology. It's an authoritarian ideology. And it's a collectivist ideology. Now, there are lots of illiberal ideologies. There are lots of authoritarian ideologies. There are lots of collectivist ideologies. I'm going to explain how, how it is all of those things. Woke is illiberal because it supports censorship. That's not liberalism. Woke supports suppressing the opinions that it views to be morally wrong, suppressing uh, speech. It agrees with censorship, self-censorship and censorship from the government and censorship from corporations. It's against free speech. That makes it an illiberal belief system. Woke is also authoritarian. And there are lots of authoritarian ideologies. This is one of them. Authoritarianism puts the power of the government over a citizen's individual rights. It's authoritarian because it supports the government with force telling you what you can and cannot say. It supports compelled speech. Examples of this currently happening, you know, in Canada you're not allowed to misgender people. They're much misgender, right? They're much further along the path than we are here in the United States uh, towards compelled speech. Same thing in the UK. You'll get a visit from police officers if you misgender someone on Twitter. This has happened to people. That's not hysteria. This has happened. So it's authoritarian because it believes um, in giving the government the power to restrict individual rights in giving the government, it, it wants the government basically to be the only entity in the room that has all the guns, that has the force on its side, right? It doesn't want people to be able to pursue individual liberty. It doesn't want people to be able to defend themselves, to engage in self-defense. It's authoritarian. And we saw a lot of this in the past two to three years with the government response to COVID and the way that the woke got fully on board, fully on board with anti-choice legislation, with anti-choice government interference. The woke, all their stuff about being pro-choice went right out the window when it came to something other than abortion. They were fully in support of the government saying, you have to stay at home. You can't go to work. These people can go to work. These people can't. These big corporations can stay open. These small mom and pop businesses have to be closed. You have to wear a mask to go outside. In some places, the government said this. They were on board with that. They were on board with the government and with corporations and with people's workplaces, coercing them to take an experimental shot. That's anti-choice. That's authoritarianism. And they fully support a lot of the woke. Dylan Mulvaney's in the news a lot recently. Dylan Mulvaney is this guy who has um, transitioned, has gotten facial reconstruction to live as a woman and very popular, just on the Drew Barrymore show, went to, to the White House, got to have a private meeting with Biden, 
Dylan Mulvaney is on the record saying that it should be illegal to quote misgender him, to call him he. What I just did, he wants men with guns, the government, to uh, prevent me from doing that, either by fining me, throwing me in jail, what have you. That's authoritarianism. To use the force of government to back up your uh, belief in censorship and to prevent people from speaking the truth or speaking opinions. So it's a liberal, woke is a liberal, it's authoritarian, and it's also collectivist. This is what ultimately, one of the things that ultimately led me to leave woke was understanding that it's collectivist. There are lots of different collectivist ideologies. One collectivist ideology that the woke talk about a lot is white supremacy. That's collectivist. So what does collectivism mean? Collectivism and individualism, they're two opposite sides of the spectrum. Collectivism says we should, we should view people as groups. We should view people as members of groups and treat them as members of groups. So collectivism, for example, uh, if you're talking about white, the white supremacist kind of collectivism, they would say white people are like this and they're better in these ways and you should treat them better, treat them differently in these ways. Black people are like this and they're not as good as white people in these ways. And so we should treat them differently in this way. But it's viewing people by what collective they're in, what group they're in. It's treating them differently based on what collective they're in. Woke does the same thing, but on the flip side, it's also collectivist, just like white supremacy. It says white people have this level of privilege, white people have this, white people have fragility, et cetera, et cetera. Men mansplain, men do this, toxic masculinity, et cetera. Woke says, White people are like this and they should be treated differently because they're like that. Black people are like this and they should be treated differently because they're like that. Men are like this. They should be treated. It does the same thing as white supremacy. It says, look at a person, not as an individual, but as a group member and treat them differently and, and allow them to speak or not to speak, allow them to say um, opinions or, or not give opinions based on what identity group they're in. It's very similar to white supremacy. So those are two different kinds of collectivism, woke white supremacy. The opposite of collectivism is individualism. Individualism says, when I meet you as an individual, I'm going to treat you as an individual. It doesn't matter if you're black or you're white or you're a man or a woman or you're trans or you're gay or straight. It doesn't matter. I'm going to treat you as an individual. I'm not going to say uh, because you're this race or this sex or this sexuality, you're like this. And therefore, I'm going to give you greater privileges or less privileges, right? The way in which we see collectivism in woke happens a lot in discussions. I'm sure you guys have all encountered this. If you're talking to someone who's in woke, who's in social justice and let's say you're a man and you're talking about abortion rights and you disagree with this person, they will say you're a man. Therefore you need to be treated differently. You need to sit down and shut up and listen to the women. They'll do the same thing. Uh, if you're, if you're a white person in conversation about race, they'll say you're a white person, you have white privilege. You need to sit down and shut up and listen to black people. That's one way in which you can see the collectivism appear because individualism says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your race is, what your sex is. You're worthy of being able to speak your opinion. You don't need to be told to shut up and sit down because people can't handle you having a different opinion. What's interesting about woke and you guys have probably seen this too, is all of these rules they have, they throw out the window. They throw them out the window all the time. They don't follow their own rules. So, for example, if you're a white person who's speaking woke about race and you're confessing your white privilege and you're confessing your white fragility and you're saying the new definitions and you're saying race, racism equals prejudice plus power. And you're if you're speaking woke, 
they will not tell you to sit down and shut up and listen to black people. They really want you to speak that as a white person. You're more than welcome to speak that. You can even write books about it like Robin D'Angelo has. Make a lot of money doing it. They will hold you up as an expert. Continue talking, right? If you're a black person who's not woke, if you're a black person who's conservative and what you're saying is in disagreement with woke, They'll throw their rule right out the window and tell everyone, including woke white people, don't listen to that black person. They're conservative. They'll come up with, men they'll do mental gymnastics to explain why does a black person not speak woke? They'll say, oh, that person's self-hating. They have internalized racism. They'll throw their rule right out the window. They do the same thing to women who don't speak woke. They'll say, you're internally misogynistic, you're self-hating, you're aligned with the patriarchy. If you're a woman who's pro-life, for example, which is not a part of woke, <laughs> and you're a woman who's pro-life and speaking your pro-life beliefs, they'll tell men who are woke not to listen to you. So the rule doesn't apply there. That's how you know at the end of the day it's not really about the identity Marxism. When you get down to like the roots of it, it's really just about the ideology itself. It's really about, uh, you know, the goals of this ideology, which a lot of people who speak it don't know what the goals are. They think the goals are one thing. I thought for 20 years, I thought the goals were to end racism and end sexism and end depression. It has very noble goals. That's how they get good-hearted, well-intentioned people to speak it. But if you look at how it operates, you can see what the real goals of the ideology are. What's the end result of this belief system? And the end result of this belief system is to destroy the family, to destroy society, to destroy capitalism. It's, it's to remake the world in what they think is going to be a better way. Never been tried yet, they say. It's been tried in different ways. It has. That's why it has so much in common with Marxism. It came out of Marxism. Marxism has been tried. It has a lot in common with socialism. Socialism has been tried. It has a lot in common with white supremacy. White supremacy has been tried. <laughs> but woke is not liberal. And I would argue it's not progressive. If you think about what progressive is supposed to mean, it's regressive. It's taking us back to a place before liberalism improved our society in all the ways it has. Before liberalism and individualism improved society in all the ways it has. They want to take us back to a place where when you look at a person, you don't see an individual you see a member of identity groups, different identity groups, and how you talk to that person and how you treat them and how you interact with them and what they're allowed to do in society. They want you to base all of that on what identity groups that person is in because they think this is a part of redistributing power between these identity groups. So one of the questions you can ask a woke person to try and get them to think. Now, this doesn't always work, but it has worked for me sometimes. You can ask them to do a thought experiment. Don't say, I want you to do a thought experiment. <laughs> like, but you can just ask them, okay, so you're saying that we need to treat people differently on the basis of race or sex. Let's say race, for example, that we need to treat people differently because things are unequal that these groups, white people, black people, for example, don't have the same, those groups don't have the same amount of power. And that we need to treat people differently based on what group they're in until we get to this place that's equal. And so what you're saying, woke person, is that is that it's not racism to treat white people differently, to discriminate against them, uh, to tell them uh, that they can't speak, that they need to sit down and listen, um, you know, 
to judge them and treat them differently because they're white. You say that woke people say that's not racist because white people have power as a group. Okay. So my question for them sometimes is how do you know, how do we know then let's say we do it your way. Let's say we, we discriminate against and we treat people differently on the basis of race in order to end racism in order to make things more equal. Right. Okay. So at what point do we reach that end goal? How do you measure that? How will you know when things, when the power level is exactly equal and now the scales are tipped, if, if we continue treating white people differently and discriminate against them, now it's suddenly racism because the power is equal, right? How do you know? How are you going to measure that? And at that point, now that you've convinced generations of kids who've now grown into adults that it's impossible to be racist towards white people, that it's just prejudice, that it's not racism. How do you now convince them? Oh, wait, guys, we've reached that level of equality and now it is racist and you should stop doing it. How do you do that? You could substitute men and women for those groups and ask them the same question. If they're an open minded person with good intent who's in this ideology, kind of naively, like I was, and not understanding what it really is. If they're a good person and they are open-minded, you might be able to get them to think by asking them that question and being genuinely curious about what they have to say. Those who are in it with bad intent, who just want to use it to oppress others, to get others to shut up, to get more power than others, to discriminate against others, those people are not, they're not going to think about what you're asking because they don't care. They have bad motives. They're in it for bad reasons. Um, but if you're talking to someone who's in it, a true believer who's in it with good intent, you know, you're going to hopefully be able to get them to think a little bit. And you might you might plant a seed that's going to help them later on, like in my case, come to understand how the whole belief system is built on lies, that it's wrong that the ends don't justify the means and that it's impossible that you can't use collectivism to cure collectivism. You can't use racism to cure racism. You can't. And renaming it is just a trick. It's just a sleight of hand. It's still racism. It's still okay. Prejudice. You can't use prejudice. Let's use their word. You can't use prejudice to cure racism. You can't use prejudice to cure sexism. You can't. So that's a good question. I would ask people, um, <coughs> excuse me, something else about woke. This is something some people talk about when they define it. And this is also true. Some people talk about how it, um, it, it operates like a cult, like a religion. That's also true. The way that it operates. I would say more, uh, it operates more like a cult than a religion. Not every religion is a cult. If you look up cult characteristics, you'll see several of them that woke uh, fits. So let's just talk about the big one that it doesn't fit. And so this is why a lot of people, I think, have a stumbling block and can't see it as a cult because there's this one characteristic out of the whole list that it doesn't match. There's not one charismatic leader. Okay. There's no Jim Jones. There's no Charles Manson. There's not that like one charismatic leader. Set that one aside. It doesn't match that characteristic. Let's look at the other cult characteristics. It encourages people to cut off contact with those who don't speak woke, who are not in the cult, who are not a part of the ideology, who are not a part of the belief system. It encourages you to sever contact with them, whether they're friends or family. I'm going to show you a tweet. Here's a good example of this. And I'm sure you guys have seen your own examples of this all the time. Uh, in my case, while I'm pulling this up, I'll just tell you in my case, I slowly started cutting people out of my life who were not woke. I unfriended them on social media. I... Uh, made sure they weren't a part of 
my ecosystem. I stopped hearing their opinions, much like a cult. I became surrounded by people in my real life and online and in the publications I chose to read and the media I consumed, I, I became surrounded by only people who were speaking woke or woke adjacent. Close enough, right? That's cult-like. Here's an example. Mike Carlo tweeted this recently. He had a great response to it. This is a gay guy named Brian on Twitter who says, so I'm having to send that email that so many of us LGBTQ plus are sending parents vote GOP or keep your son. So he's saying, he's saying you have to choose parents. If you vote Republican, I'm cutting you off. You lose your son. This is, this is, this is how woke is like a cult. He goes on to say about his parents, they're in denial about anti-queer, anti-trans legislation in the USA. Credible news links to bolster my email are welcome. Now, this is a man in his 40s, so let's assume his dad is in his 70s, maybe. And you can see he shared a little screenshot here of a text message that he sent his father. And he says to his father, it's simple. He can do the right thing or not. Or maybe he sent this to his mom. He can do the right thing or not. There's no compromise on this very specific requirement I make, which is that you are not allowed to vote for government parties that seek to murder me. Let's just talk about that little part there for a second. There's no government party that seeks to murder you. There's no government. Par the Republicans are not trying to murder gay people. That's beyond hyperbole. That's an outright falsehood. May God have mercy on you for speaking an untruth like that to your parents. This is emotionally manipulative. This is abusive. This is the tactic of a, a narcissist or a sociopath, someone with a personality disorder. This is emotional blackmail, emotional manipulation using a falsehood. And that's also, uh, you could also talk about woke in that way. It resembles personality disorders it is sociopathic and the longer people stay in it the more they start to behave in these sociopathic ways even if they don't have a personality disorder they start to behave like someone who has one because the ideology has one <laughs> so he says you're not allowed to vote for government parties that seek to murder me i shouldn't have to type those words out loud but here we are so then his dad responds and says, this is your dad. Stop your vicious words. This is not about homosexuality. I have friends who are gay and a brother who I supported and loved. And, and then he cut it off so we can't see the rest. His poor dad. That's a cult like. That is cult like cutting, cutting off family and friends. Because. They want to vote for like limited government and not raising the minimum wage or, you know, because they're voting for this. They have different political opinions than you. They're not woke. So you got to cut them out. That's like a cult. Another way in which is woke is like a cult. Um, you're not allowed to ask questions. So you're not allowed to question the dogma or the tenets of the ideology. When I first started coming out of woke, it was around 2016. It took a long time. Getting into a cult takes a long time and leaving one takes a long time. When I first started seeing cracks in my ideology and the foundation of my beliefs and the way I looked at the world. At that time, if you look at my writings from that time. I didn't thoroughly discard woke at the beginning. I thought, OK, some people have, have gotten off the path. We're losing our way. That's what I thought. And if I, just, if I just speak what I'm seeing happening, you know, I can wake some people up on my side and, and we, won't, we won't get off the path. I thought the violence I was seeing in 2016, people attacking Trump supporters physically, bloodying them. 
I thought those were people who had lost their way. When I started seeing the censorship online that was happening, censoring people who weren't woke, and all the people in my circle who I thought were liberals like me, woke like me, I was like seeing them support this censorship, calling to deplatform people, sending around petitions to boot Alex Jones off of Twitter. I saw stuff like that. At first I was thinking they've lost their way. They're just confused. This isn't the ideology. That's what I was thinking. I thought what I was seeing was a bug, not a feature. It's a way, you know, that's a way to put it. But it is a feature. Censorship is a feature of woke. Violence is a feature of woke. Because it's an authoritarian ideology. All authoritarian ideologies support censorship. They all support violence. They all support the government over individual rights. So, sorry, I'm, I've lost my way just for a second. Speaking of losing your way. Um, oh, not allowed to question. So when I first started seeing, seeing these things, I started asking questions. And again, at this point, I didn't realize that the whole ideology was shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. I just thought we were starting to lose our way. And I could ask some questions and try and get us back on track in my little corner of the world. So I started asking questions on Facebook. Um, this is right after Trump had won. And my side, like the woke, I mean, really doubled down. Trump getting elected really pushed a lot of things out into the sunlight. The ideology started to reveal itself to me and to many others. And many have walked away from it in the past few years. While others, it's crazy to see others have doubled down in it. Others have let it pull them into this psychotic sociopathic place. Like we just saw in that tweet. Um, but I started to wake up. I started to have questions. So I was sharing some of these questions and I was trying to understand why Trump won. Cause I didn't see it coming. Like most of the woke people I know, none of us saw it coming. It devastated us. And so uh, I started getting outside of my cult. It's the best way to put it. I started trying to understand why people voted for Trump and I started listening to them instead of to the people in my cult, instead of to the woke. Imagine that, <laughs> like, like going to a primary source. But in a cult, you don't do that. You don't listen to people on the other side. You don't listen to people. You're told not to. There's all these reasons. And psychologically it's weird because when you're in it you don't even realize you're doing that you have all these received opinions that other people have given you that you trust people you trust people in your world media sources you trust and at first i didn't even realize these received were received opinions i thought these were my own opinions so for example i had never listened to ben shapiro very prominent conservative but i thought i knew what my opinion was on him. I thought he was racist and sexist and a bigot and, you know, closed minded, homophobic, all of these things. I had never read an article of his. I had never watched a video of his. But I had formed this opinion, received this opinion from my echo chamber. That's what we all think, right? That's what my media tells me to think. That's just one example. There are countless examples of things I had never examined on my own, like the wage gap. I thought the wage gap was real, but I had never actually done the work to hold that opinion. <laughs> when you start, when I started looking at it, it's like, oh, oh, wow. I can't believe I had this opinion for so long and I was wrong. Um, so psychologically, there's all these uh, impediments to get you, you know, when you're in a cult like that, to, to make sure that you don't engage with the original source material, that you don't go to the source. But somehow, I think Trump getting elected, what it did for me was it shocked me so much. It was like, 
and I had been seeing cracks in my ideology leading up to his election. So I started listening to conservatives. I started, you know, if my opinions are that strong, I should be able to listen to the opinions of another and make up my mind. And I should respect myself enough as an adult to do that. So I started listening to others. I remember there was a Jonathan Pye video right after Trump won. I think he's like a comedian in the UK. It was this great video where he was trying to explain political correctness, basically, is what he was calling it. But I understood it, what he was talking about, to be part of woke, part of social justice, part of my ideology. And... He was describing, you know, how this led people to vote for someone as odious as Trump, a meanie like Trump, because they were so opposed to the censorship, to the language police, to the violence. They were so opposed to my ideology that they voted for someone odious like Trump. That's how I first understood it. So I shared that video in my Facebook at this time, remember, my whole ecosystem at that time, my whole echo chamber was woke. I had made it so. I had made my career woke. I represented woke comedians. I put woke entertainment, helped to put woke entertainment into the world. So I shared that video and it was like, you know, at that time, everyone in the woke world was, was uh, people were penning essays and articles. I had a lot of friends who were journalists or opinion piece writers and they were like, you know, this is why Trump won. It's because of racism. It's because of sexism. You know, it's the, it's all the woke, what the woke would say, right? I shared this thing that was a little different. And it's like, what do you guys think of this? Do you think he has a point? Maybe, maybe we've taken a wrong path somewhere, trying to censor people. And I remember the response to that video was very much like a response you would get in any cult. It was immediately no engagement with these opinions from the other side. How could you even take that seriously? You know, what's happening to you, Carrie? <laughs> uh, you know, it was like concerned that I suddenly was asking a question and no one wanted to answer the question. It was no, the reason he won was racism and sexism. And that's it. Even if that didn't make sense, that didn't make sense. We had just elected our first black president twice. And I had also seen an interview where the journalists had gone into the very poor South, into the Appal Appalachian Mountains, and was interviewing all of these poor white rednecks who had voted for Obama twice and then voted for Trump. Don't tell me that's racism, that Trump won because of racism. It didn't make sense. And if you looked at the numbers and you looked at how Trump got more of the black vote than previous Republicans, it didn't make sense. Racism? No, he got a higher percentage of the black vote. He did well with women. How's it sexism? I really wanted to know why one. That's what set me on this path of asking questions. But you can't do that in a cult. So that's another way in which woke operates like a cult. Um, let's think of a third way. There are repercussions for becoming a heretic or an apostate for leaving the cult. People are familiar with some of these when it comes to something occult like Scientology. You may have heard about this. You become, oh, what's the word they use for it? A subversive person. I can't remember the word, suppressive person. They have a name for it when you leave Scientology. A heretic, a heretic or an apostate, someone who leaves a religion they were in, a cult they were in, a belief system they were in, those people are hated more than the, than the ones who were never even in it. Because those people were in it, rejected it, and are now speaking against it. If you become a heretic of woke, much like the cult of Scientology, 
they will have a lot of uh, ad hominem attacks, personal attacks that they lob against you um, in my case. And we all know I, at this point, I hope we all know lots of people like myself who've left woke. And so, you know, what happens, um, there's a great unfriending. There is people who you thought were your friends, who you thought knew your heart and know that you're just sincerely looking for truth and asking questions and trying to be fair. Well, though, some of those people you learn were not your friends. They were just your allies. Sometimes I say SJWs don't have friends. They have allies. <laughs> they use that word ally a lot. It means it means you're in the cult with me. You're a fellow believer. We have the same ideology. You're my ally. You may think we're friends, but it's contingent upon you staying in the cult. When you leave the cult, uh, in my case, I had an attempted intervention. I was called publicly by uh, people I thought were friends, some, some of whom were journalists. Uh, I was called my former feminist friend who's become a red-pilled right-wing Nazi troll. Those are personal attacks and they're incorrect, but those things will happen. Some people will lose their jobs because they're leaving a cult, because they're leaving an ideology or because they, they maybe were never in it. And like Carolyn, who I interviewed yesterday, great interview. She is the former limited run games employee who got fired because she liked Hogwarts, the game. <laughs> It sounds silly, but that you can't do that. They view that as transphobic. Why? Because it's related to Harry Potter. And who wrote Harry Potter? Potter, J.K. Rowling. And she has expressed subversive views. She's not in the cult anymore. She believes biological sex is real. So Carolyn got fired because she was excited about Hogwarts coming out. And then when they did a deep search on her Twitter they found that she followed some five conservatives, something a very small number of conservatives. She followed them. Ew. She's engaging with, she's listening to people who maybe have different opinions than her, who maybe aren't in this cult. So there's punishment, like in a cult, there's punishment if you, if you start to question. They'll make an example of you. They try to make an example of you there's isolation that happens. People are afraid of leaving woke even when they start questioning it because they've seen what's happened to, if they know me, they've seen what's happened to people like me. If they know some, maybe someone else in their world left woke and they've seen what happened to them. And so I even know people, they'll start to question like privately and they're like, you know, I don't agree with everything in woke. I think it goes too far. That's where I was at the very beginning. I think it, it can, we, we go too far sometimes. It's, it's getting to be in, a little bit insufferable, but I'm not a right wing troll. Like Harry became <laughs> like, that's what they say, dude, they're going to call you that anyway. They're going to call you that anyway. You know that that's why you're afraid to say the questions out loud. You should ask yourself, if it feels comfortable being in a ideology and a belief system where you can't ask questions. Some of you who are in woke, not all of you, I I've met some people who were uh, quote unquote woke Christians, which I think is an oxymoron. I don't think you can be, but um, people who, who thought they were and claimed to be Christian and also woke. I've met some of those people who've left. Gracie West is one. She goes by Embarrassing Mom um, on Twitter. Monique Dusan is another from the Center for Biblical Unity. She was woke and Christian for 20 years, left it. Um, but some of you who are in woke are atheists or agnostics, okay? I know this. So I was there for 20 years. I know a lot of you, or I knew a lot of you. I was agnostic when I was in it. Um, and so I know that there exists this sort of uh, mm, looking down the nose, like a kind of a moral and ethical intellectual superiority over people who are, who believe in God. 
that does exist. Some of that exists in woke. And so what's so funny to me, I would ask you, if you are one of those people and you think, well, I don't believe in God because it's stupid and it's so dumb and, you know, I'm so smart. I use reason or whatever. I would just ask you, like, maybe you have trouble seeing that you do have a religion, that your belief system operates like a religion or like a cult. Um, as a Christian, I'll tell you this. I don't have any fear about asking questions of my pastor in my church, of my church friends. I don't. I don't have any fear associating with non-believers, people who are not Christians. I have a lot of friends who are atheists. I have a lot of friends who are agnostic. I have friends who are Muslim. I have friends who are Hindu. There's nothing off limits in my belief system that's like, oh, you can't be friendly and kind with that person and have that agape love for them. There's nothing like that. Oh, you got to cut them off. They're not a Christian. Eh, don't friend them. You know, <laughs> there's none of that. But in woke, if you're woke and you're listening and I would ask you, doesn't it feel kind of suffocating that you're not allowed to do that? That you've somehow gotten so far down the road in this belief system that you find yourself like that guy in the tweet, Ryan, cutting off family members or friends or people who, you know, just because they they don't agree with you that racism equals prejudice plus power <laughs> or they don't agree with you that J.K. Rowling is a turf or bigot like or they're excited about the Hogwarts game who cares or they vote for the other political party you can't be friends with them anymore you have to cut them off that's a cult man I'm sorry to tell you I do have empathy for you because I was there. I also have a sense of humor. Here's something you'll discover if you ever do leave woke. You'll get your sense of humor back. <laughs> you'll get your joy back. So the comedy part of my brain is thinking I should do a sketch that's called surprise. You're in a cult, <laughs> but I don't want, if you're watching this, I don't want to make you feel bad. Like I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing at the situation. I have great love for you, even though you're still there. I'm still friends with some of my woke friends, the very few, the very few who are open minded enough. And I think in it with such sincerity that they did not unfriend me. Why would I unfriend them? I have great love for them. They're not evil. They're just in an evil ideology. They have an evil belief system. That's my opinion. They haven't come to recognize it as evil yet. It's sort of like Daryl Davis. He's that the black guy who's pulled, what, 200 white supremacists out of the KKK by befriending them because he had great love for them. He did not view them as evil people. He viewed them as people inside of an evil ideology who had an evil belief system. And that's how he pulled them out. And that's how I view woke people. Not all of them. Some of them are full on evil. <laughs> the, the ones who are in it with bad intent. Yes. They've let darkness possess them. That's the way I view those people. They're not open minded. They don't engage in good faith. They don't really have. They don't. They don't want to hear what you have to say. They don't want to have a conversation. Those Put those people aside. There are people who are in it, though, who are not like them. There are people who are in it who are open-hearted, open-minded, big-hearted even, and who are naive, who are being used. Brett Weinstein calls them the useful tools. There are people in it who are being used to push this evil ideology. And they really believe that it's about ending oppression, ending racism, ending sexism. And they don't even realize that they are foot soldiers for the very things they think they're fighting. And those are the people that I love. Even though they're in it. I've seen enough people leave it. I left it. That's one of the reasons I do this podcast is because I know 
I have seen people who've started hate watching my show who've left it. Some of them are more base than I am now. <laughs> one of them is my one of my best friends now. I know people can leave it. I don't know if Torre can leave it. I don't know if Ryan, the Twitter guy we looked at, can leave it. I don't know. But, you know, I have hope. Okay. Anything else we should cover in this What is Woke video? I think, I think there's maybe one more aspect. I hesitate to get into this because... I might lose some people here, but why not? Okay. There's been a lot of talk by the people who are critical of woke, who are defining it, who are um, pointing out all of the, the features, the, the negative things about it that are features, not bugs. There's been a lot of talk about how this is a cultural war. It's not just a, it's not just a political war. It's bigger than that. It's a cultural war and culture affects politics. There's that famous quote, about how um, uh, the Breitbart quote, Andrew Breitbart said, you know, politics is downstream from culture. And that's true. Our politics became infected with this after our culture did. I picked this up at Duke University in the late 90s. It's been infecting our culture for a long time. It is a cultural war. But something that I've come to believe, to understand, as a truth in the past few years is that it's also a spiritual war. I know that's my opinion. I know some of you will disagree. If you haven't watched it yet, I had, I got to have a great conversation with my pastor, Bradley Helgerson from church on the square and with James Lindsay, who is an atheist and one of the most effective and prominent people pushing back against woke ideology. And what was great about that video, it's called Is Woke a Spiritual War? What was great about that video is getting to listen to two men I greatly respect and two of the smartest people I know, one who's a Christian, one who's an atheist, agree that it's a spiritual war. That's pretty mind-blowing. You should watch the video if you haven't. <laughs> um, but I do believe, I've come to believe, like the two of them, that it is a spiritual war. Um it's, it's even bigger than cultural and spiritual. That's what I think. I guess you would say if you're an atheist, I would think that because I'm a Christian and my belief system used to be woke and now it's Christianity. The way in which I view the world is different now. So I would view it that way. But I think it's true because, because of the way I see it, it spiritually make people sick. Woke makes people sick. As I mentioned before, because it is a, because it is, it, it, it's, it's almost like a, a ideology with a personality disorder. It's a sociopathic and narcissistic ideology. Um, meaning the same way a narcissist or a sociopath engages in DARVO, for example, deny and reverse victim offender. Woke does that. You know, the same way a narcissist or a sociopath or someone with a personality disorder gaslights, woke does that. Um, so if you're in it for a long time, even if you don't have a personality disorder, like this guy, Ryan, that we saw on Twitter, you will start to behave in that way because you're in a sick and evil ideology that lies to you. And, and that lies to the world about what it's about and how it functions. And I think, I don't think it's possible to be in it, even as a good hearted person with good intent. I don't think it's possible to be in it without um, some level of self deception and without some level of background anxiety, maybe low level anxiety all the time, because. Maybe because you know your ideas deep down, you know your ideas and your opinions are not your own. They're received. Maybe because deep down you have all these questions that you're too afraid to ask that you self-censor about because it's cult-like. It's also, it's, 
it's a sick ideology and it makes you sick because it tells you that the most important thing about yourself, that your identity, your very nature, who you are, your identity is defined by your race and your sex and your sexuality, that you, your identity is all of your different group memberships. That's sick. You start, that's a sick way to look at yourself. Do you understand what I mean? Like it's a sick way to look at yourself. And as a Christian, I believe you're, you're a beautiful child of God. <laughs> you were designed in the creator's image. You are not your race or your sex or your sexuality. What a terrible way to reduce a human soul. <laughs> like, and so when you're in it, it encourages you to think of yourself as that way. And because in the ideology, it is an ideology, as I said at the very beginning, that's built around viewing the world as a, a struggle for power between identity groups. And it puts all the groups in two categories. You're either oppressor or oppressed, each group. And they also, they interchangeably use the words um, privileged or marginalized. Oppressor, oppressed, privileged, privileged or marginalized. So they divide it all up into that. And then they say all of the oppressed or marginalized groups, you know, they don't have the same amount of power as the oppressor or the privileged groups. And so <clears throat> we have to treat people differently until they reach that, until we reach this equality of power between the groups, right? So because it does that, because it says, you know, we're going to, because the power is in balance, then, hey guys, if you're in one, any of these oppressed or marginalized groups, we're going to treat you better. You're going to be able to speak. You're going to be able to, um, you know, in the case of quotas at universities, like you're going to jump to the front of the line ahead of the, uh, the, the oppressor groups, like, like Asians, too many Asians get into Harvard. They're, they're oppressors because they're saying, we're going to treat you differently. We're going to treat you better because you're in these oppressed groups. And we're going to do that until we reach equality. It necessarily means that there are more and more of these groups, these identity groups, these oppressed groups, because it's a form of social currency and so now you see trans and cis. Cis is the oppressor, trans is the oppressed. You see it with mental illness. This is one of the ways in which it's a sick ideology because they talk about mental illness justice now. This is another kind of social justice now. And this is why you see in their bios on Twitter, they put stuff like in their identity. Oh, they reduce their identity to something so meaningless. My identity is I am... I am white and I am trans and I am a person with borderline personality disorder and I have anxiety and I'm fat. Like they do that. They make you see your identity as these oppressed groups that you're in because you're getting something for it right now. You can't talk to me that way. I'm in this many oppressed groups. You know, I'm fat. That's part of my identity. You can't talk to me that way. I have depression. I'm mentally ill. I'm in an oppressed group. Okay. What does that do? Over time, it causes those people who are in it to start to view themselves as mentally ill, that that's your identity. That's who you are. That being depressed is who you are or having anxiety or having a personality disorder, who you are, that you can't fix it. That you can't change it. Like being fat is something that's your identity and you can't change that yes pirate is pure victim mentality and that's sick and that's one of the ways in which it makes people sick their soul becomes sick it's also built on resentment social justice woke is built on resentment when i first started coming out of woke I know if you've been here for a while, you may have heard me talk about this, but one of the things that greatly affected me and helped me to see it for what it was 
and to change myself. I really have come to this place of like, everything now is about, the, it's about the individual. It's about individualism. Take it down to the individual level. It's that quote, be the change you want to see in the world. We won't kill woke until we've woken up enough individuals. There's enough individuals who want to get better, who want to live in a different way, who want to see the world in a different way. And so one of the things that I saw that really affected me was a, an old lecture of Jordan Peterson's, and it was called Tragedy Versus Evil. And this was old. I think it was maybe from the 80s, even the 90s. He he was talking about the, in the Bible, in Genesis, he was talking about the Cain and Abel story. And he was saying, even if you don't believe in God, even if you're not a Christian, this story is one of our oldest stories, like known to man. Let's look at the story as an analogy for a different way, or as an analogy for how to be in the world. He's like, this is a great allegory. And so he talked about how you could look at that story and say, you've got Cain who lives in resentment. He lives in his ego. He lives in, this is what I deserve. This is what I'm owed. I'm entitled to God. He doesn't make the necessary sacrifices or he doesn't make the sacrifices that please God, whatever that means. He comes up short. And then you've got Abel who lives in gratitude, humility, humbleness, worship of God, makes the necessary sacrifices. And God blesses him. This is the way to be. And Peterson talks about how where does where does the other way of being, the Cain way of being, get you if you're living in resentment? What I'm owed, what I'm due. What other people have that I don't have that I should have. Look at what Abel has that I, why did God do that? It should have been me. That leads him to murderous rage. And that broke my mind open because it was like, how many choices do we get every day? An infinite number of choices of whether we're going to behave like Cain or we're going to behave like Abel. Whether we're going to be in the ego or the soul whether we're going to be resentful, angry, entitled, hateful, or whether we're going to be grateful and humble and joyful and do the work necessary. Do the work, to use one of their phrases. Make the sacrifices necessary. And so that changed the way. I thought about that for months. It changed the way I try to live. I don't always succeed. I'm a human. I behave like Abel sometimes. I mean, I behave like Cain sometimes, but I live in a way where I am trying to root the Cain out of me. And you cannot live in social justice. You can't operate from that ideology if you're trying to root the Cain out of you. It is a resentful ideology. It's a re ideology that says, me, 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 I'm entitled to this. It's hateful. So. <laughs> Didn't mean to get emotional in defining woke. Uh, we'll clip the very short version of woke at the beginning. But it was good to revisit all this about what it is. I haven't been looking at the chat because I was focused on what I was saying. But let's take a look before I end this live show. We'll take a look and see if you guys have any questions or comments. I'm going to scroll through. I'll try to find if I can find them. The super chats first. Uh they light up with a different color, so I should be able to find these. Let's see. If I missed any, I apologize once I get to these. Uh, let's 
Sorry, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Oh, here we go. Uh, Patriotic Gestalt for $5. Thank you very much. Says, great recapping. Much needed. Good. I'm, apparently, this week, everyone's like, what's woke? You can't define it. Apparently, we needed to redo that. <laughs> so, if this has been helpful... Send it out to people. This is what woke is. I'm going to title it, What is Woke? I think I did title it that. And I'll try to do some clips from it that are much easier to share. Um, let's see what else. Oh, thank you, Tebow Talk. Became a new member. Thank you very much. Welcome. I see you all the time. I see you on Twitter, too. Okay. If there were any more, let me know. Again, there's a lot of comments I'm scrolling through. And if I miss something, I'm sorry. Force of light. You were in the zone. We get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess that's what happens when you're doing these by yourself and you're just talking to the screen. Um, <clears throat> make sure you get my super chat, says Force of Light. Oh, no. Okay. So there is one I'm missing. At least one. Let's see. I'll try to find it. You guys, I hope you have a happy St. Patrick's Day. After all of this talk about woke. Okay, here we go. Force of Light, you ladies are wonderful. Force of Light Entertainment for $4.99 says, Woke impacts people, body, mind, and spirit. Definitely a spiritual. Yes, it is. It is. And of course, being a Christian, I would view it as that. I know that, atheist, but I do. I view it as anything that's not of God is of the devil. But even if I wasn't a Christian, you don't have to be. James Lindsay's not. You don't have to be to see all the evil things about it. You don't have to be to see it causes people to become sick. It causes people to become resentful and hateful. And it causes people to uh, justify their behavior with their noble ends. You know, the ends justify the means. No, it doesn't. There's no justification for treating, judging and treating people differently on the basis of race, there's none. You can't use racism to fix racism. There's no justification for judging and treating people differently on the basis of sex. There's none. Individualism is what cures collectivism. Individualism is what was curing it in our society until woke became popular. Your average patriot nerd super sticker for $1.99. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for hanging out. Okay. Did I miss anything? Hey, Laura Higgins. Laura says somebody might have said this, but I think they're just shape shifting again. Yes, they are. Um, one of the things they're currently doing, if you haven't seen this yet, you will see it. I've started to see this a lot. Uh, because woke has become, again, the word that most people know to describe the social justice ideology, and because it has become so effective, and it's the, it's the one that's used in a lot of the effective criticisms. So it's it's uh, they they view it as it's dangerous that this word um, is used with so many successful criticisms of the ideology so they want to get rid of our ability to even talk about the ideology at all by changing the words or removing the words for it so currently what i've been seeing happen and you're you're about to see this lots of blue check mark powerful i don't know media people and stuff on twitter have been saying that woke is, means um that if you're anti-woke you're anti-blackness that woke means black it does not. Most of the woke people in the world are white. Most of them. Why? Because, well, there's more white people in the U.S. than black people. So just by percentages, you would expect there to be a greater percentage of, uh, of woke people who are white. Um, but look around you at who's speaking it. Anecdotally, you know this in your world, in your community, in the hobby groups you're in. Yes, there are black people who speak woke. Absolutely. 
there's all races of people who speak it, but there's a lot of woke people and specifically a lot of a lot of woke people are white women. A lot of the men who get into it end up getting into it because their wives are into it, their girlfriends are into it. And I I think there is some truth to the idea that sometimes men will follow their women. You know, look at the Adam and Eve story. Eve was like, eat this apple. And he's like, okay, I know God told us not to, but sure. <laughs> like, like, so that's going to get me canceled. But yes, I think it's mostly, it's a lot of women. And a lot of women bring bring uh, their fellows into it. Um, but it does not mean woke does not mean black and anti-woke does not mean anti-blackness. It's it's a falsehood that is so absurd that we you almost feel like you don't need to address it. But I guess we do because you're going to start hearing more of that. <clears throat> Judson says horny makes you do strange things. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. That's it. We're going to end a little early. Um, it's one third. We've gone for almost an hour and a half. If you like the show, please share it. If you think that this long discussion definition of woke will, will appeal to someone you know who's in it or has questions about it, send it to them. Um, definitely if you want to help deprogrammed, if you want to help, uh, our channel, you can hit like, or you can leave a comment comments, help the algorithm and make sure the video gets seen, gets seen by more people. So if you leave a comment below it, that helps even more than the chat. Um, and then also if, as always, if you want to support deprogrammed, um, what I'm doing here, what mystery Chris does here on Wednesdays with me, we have a, a Patreon, we have a subscribe star and we have a locals and all of those, or you can become a YouTube member and all of those uh, links should be in the banner. So thank you guys for hanging out and uh, have a happy weekend and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Catch you later. Bye.